هيك هل يوجد عاقل يعرف الحضاره والتقدم ولديه شيء من يعني من العقل يذهب هذا العقل الذي اعطاه الله اياه؟ Can it, can it be possible that you have an intelligent person, somebody who has intelligence and he's civilized and he has, he, he's sophisticated and yet he chooses to get rid of his own intellect? Wallahi, لو يعرض الخمر على البهائم ما تشرب والله said by Allah, even if, if alcohol was given to the cattle then they wouldn't drink it. Even the cattle wouldn't drink alcohol. كيف عاقل But how is it possible that an intelligent person drinks alcohol? فلو صلى السكران فصلاته باطلة من باب أولى. So therefore, if a drunk person prays, then his prayers invited even more than the insane person. نعم. الغلو. ال. التمييز. التمييز. The third condition is التمييز. التمييز أي التفريق بين الأشياء. And التمييز the meaning of تمييز. Is a young child reaching an age where he or she can distinguish between things. So if the young child reaches an age whereby if you say to him, This is water, this is a fire, he understands this. If you say to him, Allah, stand, sit, understands, understands questions, then this is a tamiz. This is a tamiz. So therefore, is the prayer of a young child accepted? Yes, it is correct. It is correct and accepted if the child is able to distinguish between things. As for if the child is so young that he or she isn't able to distinguish between these things, he hasn't reached the level of Tamiz at the age of Tamiz, then the prayer isn't correct. Al Islam. So the conditions of the prayer are Al Islam. العقل إن أسان إنتلكت والتمييز التمييز the age of distinction التفريق بين الأشياء والنية and then fourthly النية the intention النية so the intention يقول اللهم إن نويت أن نصلي في هذا اليوم a person says that oh Allah I have intended to pray such a prayer this day يوم الاثنين on Monday الموافق للتاسع عشر من شهر أغسطس which is corresponding to the 19th of August مصليا Praying behind Imam Abbas, this Imam Abdul Wahid, this Imam Abdul Wahid, and on my right is Nafid, Nafid, and on my left is Shafitham. I'm praying Salat al Dhuhr for Rakaat, according to the time in London, at 5 o'clock, 45 minutes. فأسره لي وتقبله مني يا رب. الله أكثر this from me. هل يا سبحانا؟ is this correct؟ لا. no it's not correct. النية محلها قلب التلفظ بها بدعة. rather the intention the place of the intention is in the heart and to pronounce your utterance upon the tongue is a بدعة an innovation. ممكن وهو يقول هذا الكلام يكون الإمام قد سجد. maybe while he's saying all of this intention the imam's already gone into sujood. نعم. إذا الإسلام والعقل والتمييز والنية. so therefore the four conditions are al Islam, the person being a Muslim, al Aqal, sound intellect, al Tamiz, the age of distinguishing, and al Niyyah, the intention. Al Tahar. so the next, the fifth condition is al Tahar, purification. al Tahar من ماذا؟ so purification from what? Tahar al Hadith wa Izala al Najas. نعم. Izala al Najas. ورفع الحدث. so purification from two things. ااا إزالة النجاسة. so purification from two things. the first of these things is إزالة النجاسة. meaning. عن ماذا إزالة النجاسة؟ so إزالة النجاسة meaning removing any impurity. so what type of impurity or from where should a person remove the impurity? ما إزالة النجاسة عن البدن. from the body a person should remove all impurities from the body. وعن الثوب. and your clothing. وعن المكان الذي يصلي. and also the place that you need to pray. ثم رفع الحدث. and then after this رفع الحدث. الأكبر والأصغر. so رفع الحدث it refers to a spiritual state of cleanliness. and this can either be and a physical state. and this can either be a major type of impurity or a minor state. رفع الحدث الأكبر يكون بالاختشاف. so removing the major type of 
purity, hay janaba, this is by performing ghusl. Rafa'a hadath al-asghar yakum bil wudu. And as for removing or purifying yourself from the minor state of impurity, then this is with wudu ablution. Falaw salla ala hadath akbar or hadath asghar. So if a person prays and upon him or he is in a state of major impurity or minor impurity, aw ala thawbi najasa. Or if a person on his toe, on his clothing, he has some najas and some impurity. Or the place that he's praying in, he has impurity. Or on his body there is some impurity. Then his prayer is invalid and not accepted, incorrect. Now, the next condition, the seventh condition is facing the Qibla. So therefore, a person has to a person has to face the qibla. Or in the fourth prayers and the nafil prayers. So the facing of the qibla is a condition in the farid of the fourth prayers and the nafil prayers. However, if he's uh, let's say in a car or on an airplane or in the train, in the voluntary prayers, the nafal prayers, then wherever the mode of transport faces, then you can pray. This is in the nafal prayer, not the farida prayer, not the obligatory prayer. Satr al awa. And then from the eighth condition, I mean the eighth condi condition is covering the awra. Covering the private area, private parts of the body. And this is a very important issue. Especially regarding those people who pray in trousers. So now we're not talking about the ruling of praying in trousers. We're talking about whether the prayer is correct or incorrect. So often when a person prays wearing trousers, then some of his behind will become uncovered. And therefore his prayer is bounded, it's incorrect or invalid. So therefore a person has to take caution that his aura is fully covered before he enters the prayer. Especially when he's going to point down to the ruku, when he's bowing, or in sujood the prostration. So therefore, the aura, the private area of a male that should be covered is from between the knees and the navel. And it is recommended that both the shoulders are also covered, from the shoulders downwards. And also, that you wear clothes that are nice and beautiful. As for the woman who is free and has reached the age of puberty, then she has to cover all of her body except her face and when people are around her that aren't from her male relatives, then she has to cover even her face. Now, Okay, after this, so after this, which is the, the ninth condition, is that the, the correct time for the prayer has to enter. So if a person prays in other than the correct time, then his prayer is bothered. It's not so it's invalid. And if a person on purpose delays his prayer until the time leaves, then his prayer is bad, but it's not correct, it's, it's not accepted, it's invalid. So a person has to fulfill these conditions before entering into the prayer. And then after this he begins to pray. Meaning, a person has actualized Islam, he's a Muslim. And he, is, he has intellect, he's sane and he's not insane. And, his, and the young child has reached the age of distinction and he has the intention in his heart and he has moved all forms of impurity 
and also removing major money impurity and he has faced the Qibla and the time has entered and he has covered his, his or her private parts so now he or she can begin to pray so the first thing is he faces the Qibla as we mentioned and fulfills all the conditions الرجلين أو أو القدمين على استقامة البدن. نعم. يعني يضع القدمين على استقامة البدن. So in terms of the positioning of his feet is to the level of his body. لكن يعني القدمين لا so his feet don't point outwards like this, and others they point inwards like this. So this is now the correct way of placing his feet. So in terms of his in terms of his feet being straight, then. He looks at the outer, obviously not the inside. So the outer of his feet are straight like <laughs> According to the position of the body, straight. <laughs> so now he's going to show you the errors that people make. <laughs> so, so making him too wide, the feet too wide is a mistake. <laughs> and this is more than the level of the body, you're being parallel with the body, the shoulders. <laughs> Oh, he makes them too close to each other. Oh, he makes his feet like this. Or pointing outwards like this. Okay, where does a person look when he's praying? He always looks at the place that he's prostrating in. Except in the tashahud, i.e. the sitting, then he looks at, at his index finger. And he doesn't turn around. So, turning around a little bit, this is something which is disliked in the prayer. And as for turning around too much or raising his sight to the skies or to the ceiling, then this is haram, impermissible, and it invites the prayer. Now he begins by saying the takbiratul ihram. Is the meaning of takbiratul ihram raising the hands? No, the meaning of takbiratul ihram is to say Allahu Akbar. Did he say anything before Allah Akbar, meaning I have intended to pray on Monday? No. No. Rather, he says Allah Akbar straight away. He says Allah Akbar, the takbiratul ihram, at the same time as raising his hand. 